Welcome to this series of screencasts in which we will examine the details of the new features in C Sharp 6. If you want to use these new features, you must first install Visual Studio 2015. So if you haven't already, head over to visualstudio.com and download the latest version of Visual Studio for free. I just want to let you guys know off the bat that for each and every screencast in this series, there is going to be a corresponding article on my website. If you want to, you can read the article instead or in addition to the screencast. Also, if you're looking for code samples that you can quickly copy and paste, head over to the corresponding article. There'll be a link in the description and you can obtain the code samples from there. Before we delve in, I think it'll be beneficial to take a minute or two in this screencast to talk about what you can expect from C Sharp 6. Conventionally, each new version of the language has one major feature and then a handful of miniature ones. For example, starting with C Sharp 3, the major feature was really language integrated query. The minor features included things like implicitly typed local variables, aka the var keyword, object and collection initializers, lambda expressions, and a bunch of other small features that helped us write link queries. In C Sharp 4, the major feature was probably dynamic binding, aka the dynamic keyword. There were also some smaller features like named and optional arguments, as well as generic co and contra variants. In C Sharp 5, that major feature was obviously asynchronous functions, i.e. the async and await keywords. There was also a miniature feature, caller info attributes, but they're seldom used even today, two or three years after C Sharp 5 was first released. In C Sharp 6, there is no major feature really, just a bunch of miniature ones. As you can see, there are far more features for C Sharp 6 than there is for any other version of the language, simply because these features are small. Most of these features are syntactic sugar, meaning they don't allow you to do anything that you couldn't already do in the language, but they do allow you to do those things in a more succinct and readable manner. You might be wondering why there is no substantial language feature this time around. And the answer is simply because the languages team were busy building the .NET compiler platform, better known by its codename, which is Roslyn. Basically, Roslyn is a roundup rewrite of the Visual Basic and C-Sharp compilers in those languages themselves and it's open source. As you can see, if we head over to the source code, which is hosted on GitHub, the C Sharp compiler is implemented in C Sharp and the Visual Basic compiler is implemented in Visual Basic. So basically the team at Microsoft, they rebuilt the compiler from the ground up in C Sharp and Visual Basic respectively. Roslyn actually is more than just a re-implementation of the compiler because the languages team had an opportunity to redesign and re-implement the compiler in managed code. They managed to expose the compiler as a service. So in addition to providing a set of compilers, Roslyn provides an exhaustive set of APIs for code analysis and language services. And what you can do is you can literally reference, and this is incredible, you can literally reference the compiler as a NuGet package and you can start to call into the same same APIs that csc.exe uses, that Visual Studio uses, and leverage the same powerful APIs. If you want to learn more about Roslyn and the potential metaprogramming possibilities, check out the project information website on GitHub under the wiki. Even if you have no intention whatsoever of ever using Roslyn directly, you are still going to benefit massively from its development because it lends the way to better tooling. I'll give you an example. If you think back to older versions of Visual Studio, and you might have read about this in recent months, it used to be that you couldn't use Lambda expressions inside of the immediate window, nor could you use closures. That's because Visual Studio uses a different compiler for producing your assemblies than it does to compile code you enter into the immediate window. There was also another compiler that was used by Visual Studio for IntelliSense. These three compilers were completely separate. They had their own benefits and disadvantages. But the trouble is, is that when Microsoft released a new feature, they'd have to update all three compilers. And in the case of the immediate window compiler, um, Lambda expressions didn't get added to that compiler. And that's why you often see articles like this one that say, hey, in Visual Studio 2015, you can now use Lambda expressions inside of the immediate window. This is because Roslyn unifies those compilers. It consolidates them so that when the languages team makes a change in C Sharp, it lights up in all the different contexts. Now, obviously, Visual Studio, I don't think this was strictly a compiler, but it used to be the case that Visual Studio had its own um, engine for parsing and understanding code because an IDE needs to have a very deep understanding of the code so that it can provide syntax highlighting, refactoring tools, code analyses, and more. 
now Visual Studio just uses that NuGet package basically, it just uses Roslyn, which means that anybody can effectively build their own version of the code editor, leveraging the same powerful APIs that Visual Studio uses. And that's exactly what the OmniSharp project does. OmniSharp is an open source project that brings similarly powerful features of Visual Studio to open source cross-platform editors like Atom and Sublime Text, even Vim and Emacs and eventually Visual Studio Code. I don't think Visual Studio Code supports extensions at the time of this recording. One more reason why Roslyn is beneficial is because it has this feature called dynamic compilation. And the, in, in practice, what that means is, is that in ASP.NET 5, we get this idea of dynamic development. This is a blog post by Scott Gu introducing ASP.NET 5. And basically, if you've ever done any kind of ASP.NET web development, you know that when you make a change, you have to stop the Visual Studio debugger, make the change, then restart the server. And it's a very tedious process. Now, leveraging dynamic compilation, which is only possible because of Roslyn, you just make a change in your code, refresh the browser, and those changes are live. You can read more about that here. So I've just given you three pretty sound reasons why Roslyn is hugely beneficial. And there's more, because now that the compiler is implemented in managed code, it's possible for the languages team to more quickly prototype features and so that it makes language innovation easier going forward and so we'll probably see a faster turnaround for new features moving forward now that c sharp 7 is open source you can go to the github this is so cool i'm so really happy about this you can go to the github repository and you can view design notes for the language features that they are kind of speculating about implementing in C Sharp 7. If you look at this issue here by Mads Torgerson, I think that's how you pronounce his name. He's the project manager for the C Sharp team. And here's a list of the features that they're thinking about implementing in C Sharp 7 already and features that they're kind of like, eh, maybe we'll implement them and ones that they probably won't implement or, you know, this time or ever. Um, it's really, really cool. And so if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I recommend that you check it out. Anyway, now that you have a sound understanding about what to expect, let's start by examining the first new feature, which is expression bodied members. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video, where we'll talk about those.